Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. My name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader of this church community, and I'm so grateful that you have taken some time out of your day in your journey of faith to be a part of what God is doing here in the city of San Marcos. We have a saying around here, you don't have to go to church here to go to church here, and that means you are welcome to enjoy this message from your tablet, phone, or computer, wherever you're watching it on. Big things can happen when we expect God to move, so I pray today that God would speak to you through this message, the message today can encourage you and empower you to move throughout your week and what's next in your life. So enjoy this message. Today, we, uh, like I said, we're wrapping up our message series, Expressions. And what we've done over the last couple of weeks uh, is dig into the different ways that love is expressed through us when we are spending time in God's presence. Or as some of the scriptures say, it says, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've heard it that way. You've heard that before in your life. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we have spent some time over the last few weeks kind of demystifying the Holy Spirit because sometimes that, that phrase, uh, that the Holy Spirit can seem uh, something that we, you know, we don't really quite understand and we, we're not really sure how to comprehend the Holy Spirit. Maybe we don't know what that means, but if we can demystify it a little bit and say that is the way that this particular author of the Bible is explaining what it means to spend time in God's presence. And so with the scripture that we, the, the verse uh, that we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks is in Galatians. It's Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And it basically says, the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. So that's where we got the name, the title for this series, expressions, the different expressions of divine love that are expressed, expressed through us and in us by the Holy Spirit are Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Never let religion stand in the way of you taking action on these things. That's what that means by don't, let the, don't set the law above. So it's that strength of spirit that I want to talk about today. Another, another translation, another version of it says self-control. Self-control, believe it or not, is a spiritual gift given to us by God. Self-control can be one of those things that is very clearly on you because it says self, self-control, but what we see here, what we'll kind of explore together a little bit today is self-control is a gift that has been given to us. So even when we don't feel self-control, we can still be able to express it. You know, thinking about self-control, I didn't ask her if I could say this today, but uh, our, a good friend of ours, Birdie, she was up here earlier. She, uh, uh, she is not always the best at self-control. She doesn't really, yeah, you can come up and say something if you, uh, if you want to. Keep my name. Sorry, we had to. <laughs> uh, topical. <clears throat> I'm sure Will's watching right now. If you are, Will, that's your bad. Um, <laughs> there's only one question for Connect Group this week, and it's what did you think of Will Smith and Chris Rock? No, it's not. Please don't talk about that. Um, thanks, Bert. Let's give it up for Bertie Schneider. Yeah. Sure. I told her not to hold back on the slap, and she did not. So <laughs> keep my God's name out your mouth. All right. We're going to be talking about self-control today. And to be fair, we were always going to be talking about self-control on this particular Sunday. It's not because of the Oscars. But I, I got to thinking about my own self-control and where, where I, I, I have self-control is a few areas and where I definitely lack self-control. I'm definitely the kind of person who easily indulges in the things that 
I like. So I started to think about the things that I am not good at with self-control. One of those things is if we're going to pluckers, I'm not, there's not a lot of self-control there. I'm, I'm cleaning up people's plates around me. You know, if there's, a, if there's some queso around, I mean, does anyone have self-control? I mean, you, that's when you've got to be praying for the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. You know what I mean? When there's a bunch of queso around and you're trying to get in shape. And I started thinking about, like, there's, uh, this is true. Since the iPhone, since Apple came out with uh, the iPhone 3G, how old is this guy? Does anybody remember the iPhone 3G? Okay, it was the second iPhone that Apple made. And now we're, you know, we're on iPhone 13. For the first five years, starting at the iPhone 3G and every phone they made after, I was like, I don't need a new phone. I don't need a new phone just because Apple makes one, right? I don't need a new phone just because Apple puts out a new one, right? Wrong. I was the guy, this is true, I would show up and wait in line at the Apple store. I'd show up three, four in the morning, I'm in line till, till 10, and I'm like, I don't need it, but have you seen that you can edit video on your phone now? I mean, I don't need it, but have you seen some of the slow-mo videos you can take? I mean, I don't need it, but have you seen some of the photos that you can take on this phone? I don't think you guys get it. Look how fast it is. It's half a second faster than the other phone. You see what I'm saying? Got no self-control. When it comes to technology, I just don't have self-control. And so I, and, and maybe for, you know, what I used to have no self-control is my anger. Don't raise your hand. Anybody of you, any of you have trouble with self-control when it comes to anger? I mean, I was the, I was the kind of person I was, you know, punching doors and there was this, there was this one time, this was true, uh, a, a car, I got so mad at, at somebody, it doesn't matter who, um, read my blog later to find out. Uh, I punched, I was in the car and I punched the steering wheel. And <laughs> the horn got stuck, and so it was just nonstop. Um, and so it was embarrassing enough that I, lo- you know, that I lacked my self-control and, and, and punched the horn. And, and then a- added to that, any time I turned the car on, it was her. And so <laughs> I remember there was one morning, I wake up, woke up early in the morning, drove the car into like the middle of nowhere just so I could try to work on the horn while it was just blaring loud. So I wonder for you, where, where do you lack self-control? Do you lack self-control when it comes to gossip? Do you feel like, I just got to tell somebody this, hey, have you heard? Did you hear about Will Smith? Actually, that is true. Don't come up and slap me. But Birdie is our resident, like, hey, did you hear? First mor- Monday morning, hey, did you hear about Will Smith? So I went and looked it up online and then came back and said, yeah, I already heard about it. Why? What did you have to say about it? That's how I head her off at the pass. Where do you lack self-control? What's fascinating to me, digging into this, is self-control is something spiritual that we can work out. Instead of being something that is just on you, if you don't have self-control, that is your problem, and you need to fix it. I love that we can partner with God, that spending time in God's presence and partnering with God allows us to practice, to express self-control along with doing what we need to do on our end. Being able to practice self-control can really do great things for you. How about this? Where do you wish you had self-control? Think about that for yourself. Where in your life do you wish you had self-control? There's a few areas I wish I could have more self-control. It's so easy. It's so easy to think about. I, I know I found an area, and, 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 and tell me if this is you, I know I found an area where I lack self-control when after something happens, I'm mad at myself for letting that happen, right? I, I, I get home from uh, uh, dinner at Pluckers, and I'm like, oh, oh man, I overate. I'm never overeating again, ever. You know, next time I go to Pluckers, just a side salad, nothing else. Side salad and a water for me, please, Mr. Self-Control. Until we get to Pluckers, I'm like, well, we don't go to Pluckers all the time. It'd be crazy not to get a couple of wings. My wife, uh, the other day, she called me a fake vegetarian. 
Um, I was vegetarian for two and a half years, and I just started to eat a little bit of chicken here recently. And since then, I have not, I have not bragged. I don't even know if it's a brag. It's just telling people if I'm a vegetarian, right? Uh, since then, I haven't really said I'm a vegetarian, but the other day I had some chicken, and Amber's like, you are just a fake vegetarian. <laughs> I'm like, well, first of all, it's not on my bio, on my social media. It's just, okay, forget it. That was a, maybe that was a personal matter I brought to you guys. Sorry, I'm just working something out in my marriage here. You guys don't mind, do you? Anybody married? Don't raise your hand. So what I, what I want to look at today is 2 Timothy Verses one, or sorry, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Now, this is a, a, a letter written to a person named Timothy. So it's, it's a letter from Paul, who was actually the writer of Galatians that we read earlier. Now, Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, and he's writing to encourage him about a few things, give him uh, some advice. And here at the beginning of this letter, it sounds like Timothy might be a little bit down. Timothy might feel like he doesn't really know what he's doing. I've been there. And so it's interesting, very early on in the letter, it's the very beginning, watch what Paul says to Timothy. I'm going I'm I'm to start off in six, and then we'll hit seven right here, okay? It says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when, my, when I laid my hands upon you. So you might, if you, if you didn't grow up in church, you might hear that sometimes laying hands on someone is just a way of, of, of connecting in a deeper way when you're praying for somebody or, or, or speaking over somebody. And he says, for God will never give you the spirit of fear. But we do have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. Maybe you've heard the, uh, the verse, the translation that says, for God will give you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Holy Spirit can give us mighty power, love, and self-control. I just, I, I, I don't know if it's mind-blowing, but I do think it's interesting that self-control, being able to do the right thing in the right moment, is something that can come to us from God. Not, not it can come to us, it does. It does come to us. So then I think to myself, like, okay, I, I do want self-control in some areas. And I could probably recommend you a bunch of books on self-control, and you could probably go Google how do I gain more self-control, or, or, or just Google self-control, and you could find all kinds of articles that have to do with psychiatry and psychology and everything else. But how great is it that we get to partner in our faith, that we get to partner with God in growing our self-control. We can grow our self-control when it comes to spiritual matters. Let's say you want to pray more. You want to go to church more. You want to trust God more. You want to be more patient with your children. You want to be more patient with your spouse. You want to be more patient with yourself. I got all the patience in the world for everyone else in my life, and I have zero patience with myself. Anybody else like that? Anybody else need a lot of counseling? So how can, we, how can we get to a place where we are practicing healthy self-control? Because you know what I'm good at? You know what I'm really good at? I'm really good at one extreme or the other. Anybody else like this? Where it's one extreme or the other. There's, there, there's not a lot of room for a healthy dose of self-control in my life. There's not a lot of room for, well, uh, 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 I'll just temper it a little bit. Just, a, you know, in portions. No, it's either I'm doing it or I'm not. I'm either a vegetarian or I'm a fake vegetarian. There's nothing in between. One way or the other. So how can we get to a place where we are practicing healthy self-control? If, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down here. Self-control is, is, is what brings action to your thoughts. Self-control is what brings action to your thoughts, or, or you can even say it this way, what keeps action from your thoughts. Self-control could have changed everything about the news this week for our man Will Smith. A little bit of self-control would have changed the actions that were obviously in his thoughts. 
One small mistake. One small mistake, one moment where we lack self-control can change so much of our life, but that's true in the positive sense, too. Moments of self-control, practicing self-control, expressing self-control, partnering with God in our spirituality, apparently for the spiritual gift of self-control, can change our life from moment to moment, from day to day. Practicing self-control. We're reading this book right now as a leadership team called Atomic Habits. It came out a few years ago. You may have heard of it. But this guy, he's brilliant. He's, he's, they're called Atomic Habits because they're very, very, very small. So when you talk about getting in shape, everybody wants to get in shape. And we want to we wanna do the things to get in shape, but we don't, we don't want to order just a side salad at Pluckers. Or maybe you do. I don't. Maybe when it comes to money, do you have a lack of self-control when it comes to your money? Is it hard for you to walk into a store and walk out without buying something? These are opportunities we have to practice, to exercise, to express self-control. If we can have a healthy sense of self-control, now we are taking action on our thoughts. The kind of person that we want to be. The kind of, do we want patience? Do we want less anger in our life? Do we want to gossip less? Do we want to spend less money? Do we want to eat healthier? Do we want to work out more? Self-control is what brings action to these thoughts one way or the other. And myself, and myself my extreme self, I'll say I want to do something. I'm going to practice self-control and going to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym every day, every day this week, Monday through Friday. So I set it up, and I schedule it Monday through Friday. Bum, 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 bum. And then Wednesday, I wake up, and I'm feeling tired. Ah, I don't know. Maybe I'll just cancel the gym today. And so I'll miss the gym one day, and I'm like, you know what? Forget it. It's a fruitless endeavor. I'll never be in shape. I'll just cancel the gym. Is anybody else like this? I'll just cancel the gym membership. I'm never going to go to the gym again. I might as well overeat every meal. Let's go get a pint of ice cream. You know what? Half gallon. Half gallon of pistachio almond from Bluebell. Am I right? Can I get an amen from anybody on Bluebell? Okay. So that's, that, I'm, I'm, that's where my mind goes. Extreme, extreme. But wouldn't it be great if I could, if you could, Take this gift, this spiritual gift, seemingly spiritual gift of self-control and express that on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis. How much of your life could change? How much of these small changes could impact the health that you want to have in the future? How much would future you so much appreciate present you making these small expressions of self-control in these areas that you want to grow in and change in. If you're taking notes, write this down too. When we feel like we we lack self-control, all we have to do is remember that God has given it to us. So maybe I just wrote this for me, because when I lack self-control, I just go off the deep end, forget it, never again. And if I can just take some time, I should just think that to me. When I feel like self-control, like I lack self-control, All I need to do is remember that God has given it to me. This really, I I, I don't know why it did this week, but it really shook me up a little bit that self-control is this spiritual matter, that it shows up multiple times throughout the Bible. This idea of self-control coming from God. This idea of self-control coming from our time spent the Holy Spirit, which again is just God's presence on earth, spending time in God's presence. Check this out. This is, and this is something for me too. Setting yourself up for success is the first step toward healthy self-control. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by setting yourself up for success? I'm just going to hang on pluckers here for a minute, okay? If I wait until I am famished, ravenous, incredibly hungry, and then I say, let's go to Pluckers. I am not setting myself up for success. I'm talking, bring out, if you don't know what Pluckers is, it's a, it's a wing place, okay? 
I'm talking bring out the fried pickles just so we can get, you know, get it snacking. You know, do you guys have any fried mushrooms back there? Ah, bring them out. Why not? They're mushrooms. They're healthy. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get the wings, probably. And then I'm going to get the fries because I'm so hungry. Well, I just, you know, I don't always get the fries, but I'm going to get them today because I'm so hungry. I'm not setting myself up for success. If you want to be more patient, how can you set yourself up for success? Because self-control is not about just white-knuckling your life, saying, I I said I wasn't going to do that, so I'm not going to do it no matter what. Self-control isn't saying, I'm never going to do this again. That's not realistic. Self-control is saying, each time an opportunity comes up, I get a chance to practice, to express, to exercise self-control. It's way easier said than done, but it's even easier knowing that we get to partner with God when it comes to self-control. You're not just out there on your own. You're not just out there on your own saying, just... Figure it out. And once you've figured out your self-control, once you have all your stuff together, then you can come be spiritual. No, that is how we work out our spirituality. Do you see that? That is how we get to work out our faith. How to grow our faith, how to work out our spirituality is by these small moments we have of self-control. So that's what I want us to do. I want us to set ourselves up for success. Maybe if you want to stop gossiping and you want to set yourself up for success, here's how. Whatever information you have, wait till someone asks you. And then if they ask you, you can give them the juice. Speaking of juice, how about Crystal's last two messages? If y'all haven't heard them, y'all need to check them out on the podcast. I'm serious. They might as well have been called apple and orange because of the juice that was in them. You know what I mean? How can you set yourself up for success? What if you have trouble with self-control when it comes to spending money? I know how you can set yourself up for success. Create a budget. Create a budget of what money you're going to spend even before the money comes in. You know what your paycheck is going to be. Most people do. Create a budget and then share it with somebody. Share it with your spouse. Share it with a friend. This is the money I'm going to make this month and this is what I want to spend it on. That's setting yourself up for success. Is it going to happen every time? Is it going to happen every month, every paycheck? Probably not. That's okay. These are opportunities to practice self-control. This is a spiritual practice. You want to be patient with others? Maybe you don't consider yourself a patient person. Easy way to set yourself up for success. Count to five before you respond with anything. You want to be less angry Count to 105 before you respond to anything. Go take a walk before you have a difficult conversation. I don't know what it is for you, but what can you do to set yourself up for success in the areas of your life that you lack self-control where you would want more self-control? That setting yourself up for success, that is what, is that, that's the first step towards healthy self-control. And maybe I put that, health, that word healthy in there, the healthy self-control for myself. Maybe that was just for me. A lot of these times when I'm up here talking to you guys, I don't even, I don't even know you're here. I'm just, I'm just preaching to myself. I need some, you know what I mean? I'm working some stuff out. Healthy self-control, not, not white-knuckling it and not one extreme to the other. But a self-control where you try it, and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, man, give yourself another shot. Be more patient with yourself. Last thing I want you to write down is this. Self-control is not about getting everything right. It's not about doing everything right. It's not one extreme to the other. You have to do everything right, then you have self-control. It's at least having the knowing of what's best in the moment. It's taking the time to understand what is the best in the moment. That is how you can practice self-control. Are you always going to get it right? No. No. But self-control isn't about doing everything right. If you know what's best, that means you know better for next time. If you know what's best next time, you can do even a little bit better the next time. And when you make a mistake, it's no worries. 
because this is a spiritual practice that we get to work out every day in our faith with God at Connect Group with the people around us. There's some things I want to do when it comes to my faith. Setting myself up for success. I want to be able to set myself up for success so when it's time to practice self-control, I'm not having to fight everything in me. I'm not having to fight against all of my instincts. I told, I told my wife yesterday, I said, hey, today, just today at least, I think I said the week, but I said at least for today, lunch and dinner are salads, no matter what. I've had, I've had too many mornings where I, I wake up and I'm like, that was a bad idea. And just yesterday, just yesterday, salads for lunch and dinner. And that was tough. That was tough. Yeah, I mean, give it up, Matt. <laughs> Matt gets it. <laughs> Is that a big deal? No, not really. But it was just a tiny little version of me to be able to practice some self-control. Making a plan, setting yourself up for success. How can you make a plan? Wherever it is that you lack self-control, wherever it is that you wish you had a little more self-control, what can you do in your life this week, just today, one time, to set yourself up for success. Not to change your whole life. Not to start every habit you've ever wanted to start today. Talk about a way to set yourself up for failure is by saying, I'm going to change everything about my life. I'm going to do everything different. This will never happen again. I'll never do this again. I'll never say that again. That's not setting ourselves up for success. That's setting ourselves up to be disappointed in ourselves. But if we say, hey, today, right now, in this moment, I'm going to practice this. In this moment, I'm going to know that I'm practicing self-control. In this moment, today, for this pluckers trip, I think I'm getting pluckers for lunch. I don't know how I cannot now. I'm going to get a salad with some wings in there. See? Genius. <laughs> What can I do today? What can you do today? I'm telling you, it, it, it can really shift the way that you think, the way that you approach your own life, your own day to day. If you can see self-control as a practice of your spirituality, if you can see self-control in your life, any area of your life that you feel like you want some more self-control, if you can see that as a way to work out your faith, all of a sudden you are not alone in the things that you need to change. Now you are partnered with God. Now you are partnered with this entire community, look around you, of people who want to have more self-control in different areas of their life. And now we are growing our faith together. Now we are growing our spirituality. If you could, real quick, I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. I want to pray for us this morning. What an amazing opportunity we have to work with God in the things that we want to grow and change about ourselves. God, we're so grateful today to have you on our side, knowing that time spent in your presence gives us the spiritual gift, the fruit of your spirit, that we have self-control. That self-control can be a part of our joy, our peace, our patience, our goodness, our kindness, our gentleness. God, I pray that you would give us the patience that we need to have with ourselves as we practice self-control. We love you. Amen. Y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. To find out what is next for you in your journey of faith, I want to invite you to go to theheart.church slash next. See what's in store for you. Get in touch with us. We would love to be able to connect with you and see how we can partner with you in your journey. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.